Hello Internet, I'm Remote Leg. Welcome to Far Cry 4. It's a great game and this video will show you how to play it. There are no plot spoilers in this video so you can relax. This is all about the mechanics of the game and how to get the most out of them. I'm also not going to state any actual key press commands because they're configurable. I'm playing on a PC and I've configured my keyboard commands to suit my playstyle. You might be playing on a console, so there's no point in me saying press M to display the map if you don't have an M key available. Before we start, I just want to mention one item that is pretty special, the camera. It has a great zoom, even better than most sniper rifles. Its other ability is to tag people and animals. Once tagged, they stay tagged, even through walls. Honestly, the camera is a great tool and should not be ignored. Let's start with the good stuff, combat. Here we've got a gun fully loaded. You can tell because in the bottom right hand screen the bars are full. The count to the right is how many bullets we have spare ready to reload our gun. We shoot the gun and the bar drops by one slot. We reload the gun, the bar goes up and the ammo count decreases by one bullet. The civilians mostly wear brown. The good guys wear blue and the bad guys wear red. Shoot the guys in red. They all work for the arch-villain in this story named Pagan Min. There are animals that will also attack us, so we need to be wary. Oh yes, watch out for lunatic drivers. A minivan will kill you faster than a tiger. Takedowns are pretty simple. Melee attacks somebody by surprise, and it's a definite kill. Most of our combat will be with guns. Of course, if we're on the receiving end or take damage some other way, such as falling down a cliff, we get hurt. The green bars under the minimap are our health, and when they're all gone, so are we. If we take damage that only partially depletes one of our green bars, that bar will regenerate after a short delay. If that bar is completely empty, it will only refill with the aid of rest or a healing syringe. <sighs> Any flashing bodies can be looted, mostly for cash. It's kind of picky, so we need to be standing in just the right spot to get this dialogue to pop up. If you don't see it, move around a bit. Walk over weapons to automatically pick up any ammunition laying around. We can also swap our current weapon for a weapon laying on the ground if we like the look of it. At first, we can only carry one weapon at a time. Any other weapons we have found are stored, free of charge, in the shop where we can collect them at any time. It's important to remember we only pay for weapons once. After that, they're free. We also have a selection of thrown weapons. Bait attracts animals to do our killing for us. It's a good distraction. Just make sure the animal doesn't attack you. Throwing knives are silent and deadly. Grenades are noisy and deadly. Molotov cocktails are very pretty and deadly. Be careful because they can start forest fires. All these items can be improved with crafting and they all allow us to carry more stuff. To craft we need to collect animal hide. So you can see we need three honey badger skins to craft a better weapon holster. This will allow us to carry an extra weapon. Here's how we get hides. We kill animals then skin them. Kill a pig, get one pig skin. If we use a bow or a knife instead of a gun, the skin is less damaged, and we get two hides for one kill. We also get some karma. Don't use explosives like a rocket launcher. All we get from that is a damaged hide that is no use to anybody. So let's make a syringe kit. It's pretty easy because we only need four tapir skins, and we already have one. First we find a tapir and ruthlessly slaughter it. We slice it open and take its skin. The meat for bait is just a bonus. We do this again, and the fourth time. Now we can craft a nice new syringe kit. It's a pity so many tape air had to die, but hey, if you can't handle the danger, then stay out of the forest. At first level, the hides we need to get are fairly easy, but they're more difficult as we progress higher. Each item can be improved a maximum of four times. In my opinion, the best items to craft early on are the weapon holster, so we can carry more weapons, and the loot bag, so we can carry more junk to sell. The third one I would concentrate on is the wallet, so we can carry more cash. Money is easy to get in Far Cry 4, so it's a good idea to improve our wallet so it doesn't fill up. 
The tiger skills in orange on the left are mainly for attacking and the elephant skills in blue on the right are mainly for defending. You can take skills at any time by spending skill points and clicking on the skill you want. You get skill points by gaining experience levels which is done by completing quests and killing bad guys. You can have any mix of skills, but some have prerequisites before you can choose them. There are some skills that I found particularly good to get. Here are my picks for what's good. Add another health bar. This goes well with the other skill that makes healing syringes heal 4 bars instead of 3. Crafting syringes. There are 4 syringes we can craft in addition to the healing syringe. At last we can use those coloured leaves we've been collecting. Another good skill allows us to get two leaves instead of one whenever we harvest a plant. Now every green plant means another healing syringe because they get crafted automatically whenever we get two green leaves. Healing syringes are great. Wouldn't it be great to be able to run forever without getting tired? I think so. This one is harder to get though. Do good things to gain karma. Do bad things to lose karma, even if it's an accident. There are also some special karma events that we can complete to get a karma boost. If you help the Golden Path fight off some bad guys, remember to stick around for your reward afterward. Increasing our karma level sometimes unlocks new weapons, so that's good. Here we've reached a new karma level and unlocked the Shredder submachine gun. We race back to our safe house and, sure enough, there it is in the shop. We purchase the Shredder, a one-off cost, and now we can equip it from the shop any time we choose for free. Driving is pretty easy and you'll soon get the hang of it. There are lots of vehicles available and many different types. Nobody minds if you just take whatever you need. Watch out for the locals though. They are appalling drivers and you'll see a lot of carnage on the road. When we're swimming, we can't use any weapons except a knife. This is very bad when we get attacked by demon fish or crocodiles. Also, when swimming, we can't use any syringes. Not the one that lets us breathe longer underwater, not even a healing syringe. This is very, very bad. Remember to inject your syringes before you dive in. There's often treasure at the bottom of lakes, but try not to drown or get killed by animals while searching for it. Water is not our friend in Far Cry 4. We do all our shopping at the safe bases and the travelling Sherpas. Here we can turn junk into cash and buy stuff we need. Here's a nice touch. See all this stuff that the game recommends we just sell? Well, we can do that with one click. Click the button, accept, and all the junk is sold for cash. Nice. Don't forget to read the descriptions of the junk. Some are pretty funny. So each time we go to a shop, we sell our junk refill our ammo and buy other supplies we need. The first purchase is usually armor. It costs the same whether or not we have any armor left, but hey, money is not a big problem, so just go ahead and do it. Getting new weapons is a two-step process. First, we need to unlock the weapon. Hover over it to find out what's required. Once it's unlocked, we need to buy it. We can either pay for it, a one-off purchase, or get it for free by finding it on a body. Some quests will give us weapons. Look at the bars on the bottom right to see the stats of each weapon and decide if it's the one you might like. If it's something you really want, then I suggest you just go ahead and pay for it so you can start playing with it right away. Remember, this slot only takes sidearms. The other three take anything. The maps are pretty expensive, but they are really useful because they add lots of information to our map. This is great for setting goals and deciding where to go next. The other thing we can do in our safe house is sleep. The only benefit we get from sleeping, as far as I can tell, is to regain health. So here's how we do it. First, we interact with the bed in our safe house. According to our watch, it's now 8 o'clock. The red arrow on the dial is the hour when we want to wake up. The minimum rest is 3 hours, so we set it for 11 o'clock and sleep. A bit of time-lapse photography, then we wake up. If we check our watch again, we see it's now 11 o'clock. Perhaps this will be important later in the game, perhaps not. So that's most of what I can tell you without spoiling the plot. There are lots of opportunities to run wild in Kira. Oh. 
up exploring, looting, mountain climbing, killing and generally behaving like a maniac. So just get out there and have some fun.